Hi everyone! If you're a foreigner with temporary residency in Mexico and you want to buy a car in Mexico, this video is for you. We share with you, although Air is not with me today, we share with you our experience of successfully searching for, buying, insuring, and driving our car in Mexico as a foreigner, as well as selling it before we left Mexico. Now I'm going to start to talk to you a little bit about some of the procedures we went through and you will probably have to go through also and it could potentially get a little detailed and a little lengthy but it's also going to be worth it and the payoff is at the end of it all you're going to have a car and freedom to drive in Mexico. So hang in there. In about June of 2022 we applied for and received our temporary residence in Mexico. We were so excited and we documented the whole process here in the video above if you're interested on how to get your temporary residency in Mexico using the regularization program, which means we just did not have to prove financial solvency. Even though we could, why go through the hassle if you don't have to? Many people are already deciding to live in Mexico and are illegally staying in the country. So Mexico decided to introduce a legal way to help people stay in Mexico. Some people scoff at this option being available, but it is available. It's above ground, legal, and it's offered by Immigration or INM Mexico. So why not? See if you qualify and if you do, go for it. We did it. You can too. Fast forward two years later to the new year of 2024 and we find ourselves in Mexico once again for four months and we want to buy a vehicle and have a little more freedom. We heard tourists are now no longer able to buy vehicles in Mexico easily, legally, and we were so excited to hear that as temporary residents we were now able to buy a car in Mexico. But oh my goodness, where to start? Well, where to start was to look at some cars, find out what the prices were out there. We looked at many cars, test drove a few, and we were surprised at how much we would have to pay in the area we were in, Jalisco and Nayarit, to get something decent. Apparently we just hit the market at a abnormal high. We wanted to find something that was not rickety or rundown. We ended up finding a VW Volkswagen Gull, not to be confused with Golf, G-O-L, Gull. It was a four-door standard and it was about 95,000 pesos. And boy, oh boy, there was a lot of learning that we did along the way. And that's what we're here today. I'm here today to help you maybe facilitate the whole process for yourself and save you some time. When we went through the process, we communicated a little bit back and forth with someone we had met through a Facebook group in the Puerto Vallarta area who deals in cars, car insurance, um, plating, original um, bills of sale and all that kind of stuff. He answered quite a few questions for free just in a chat group and we're grateful to him. So if you're interested or in the Puerto Vallarta area, let us know and we can set you up with contact information for him. So let's start with the car. We used Facebook Marketplace in the area where we were in Mexico to start searching for a car. We used Facebook Marketplace the most because what we found is that we could zoom in on the location closest to where we were living to see cars directly in our area. Because for us, we were on foot or maybe the bus. We, we maybe didn't want to use a taxi or an Uber or a bus to go a good distance just to see a car in the blazing sun and then have to bus it all the way home again. It would take the better part of a day. So if the sellers were in our community and willing to meet us, it just made the whole process so much simpler. Yes, it restricted how many cars were available to us, but for us it was just totally worthwhile to just be um, close to our rental area. If the sellers were willing to come into our community from a little bit farther out, I would mention that we were on foot in our communications and often people were very kind and understanding and accommodating because they want to sell their car and they would come to meet us at the nearby grocery store or a nearby public space to where we were staying so that I could test drive the vehicle. We also heard there were quite a few smaller little used car lots that you could browse through. Most or all of those lots were not very close to where we happened to be renting. And again, it would have been quite a commitment to take the bus and travel all that way just to browse through some cars, but it is an option available to you if you happen to be close to these lots or want to taxi, Uber or bus to those lots. I can leave a Google map link in the description to where those lots are located and it would be well worth your while to see what the prices are because there's a benefit to using the lots also. The benefit is that most of the time the paperwork's going to be well in order. 
a regular seller might have parts of the paperwork that you're going to need and may be missing other ones and it's going to cause you frustration. So a lot will be a benefit to you in that regard. For us, I knew what I was looking for in paperwork, which I'm going to get into later in this video. And so to buy from a, a local, just regular person selling the car, I knew what to look for. And for us, that was just better because they were willing to come to us. Okay, so now you've found a car that you're interested in. You've test driven it, you've checked that all the lights work, the horn works. You'd be surprised. The suspension is good, it has all the things that you're looking for, yay! But part of what you need to look for at this test drive is the paperwork. You need to lay your eyes on it and make sure that there's a few key pieces there because if they're missing, we would recommend walking away from that car. So you need to ask the seller to pull out all the papers that he's got for the car. And this is where you want to get some photos of those papers so you can check back on it later when you need that information to get insurance prices or that kind of thing. The papers will have all the info that you need like the make, the model, what trim the car has and other information for that particular vehicle. You'll need all this when you're going to be looking for insurance, but more importantly, you really need to make sure that this car comes with the original bill of sale. If there's no original bill of sale, it might seem like a minor thing, but you need to walk away from this car. You are going to have problems down the road if you do not have the original bill of sale from the seller, whether it's a dealer or a regular person. The final important piece of information to make sure that you have are copies or the originals of the yearly tenencia or plates registration. For instance, if you're going to buy a car in 2024, let's say, and you notice that the plates were paid for 2019, 2020, and 2021, and that's it. If you don't have copies of the paperwork that was paid for 22 or 23 or 24, the year you're buying it in, then you're going to likely have to pay yourself for 22, 23, and the year you're buying it, 2024. All the years of the plates have to be paid up in, in full before you're allowed to drive it for your current calendar year. So it's not the end of the world, but it's something to keep in mind that if there are years that are unpaid, you will have to top those up yourself before you can legally drive the car. For us, we simply looked at a car and considered seriously only the cars that were fully paid up. It just made life easier for us. One thing you may want to keep in mind is looking at what license plate state is currently on the car that you're considering to buy. For example, in our situation was that we were splitting our time between Nayarit and Jalisco, but we knew we would be ending our time in Mexico in Jalisco. And so I, I wanted to buy a car with a Jalisco plate so that it made it easier for my new buyer, likely going to be from Jalisco because that's where I was going to list it for sale, to buy the car without any reservations or questions from me. I wanted our car to have a plate that was already in the state we were going to be living in also. It all depends on what state you're in, what state you're going to be spending most of your time in, and what state you plan to sell your car in Mexico in. We think all this warrants a bit of thought. Okay, so back to the yearly registration for the plates. There is a website for the state of Jalisco and there's, I'm sure, websites for other states in Mexico that I will link for you in the description. It was super helpful for the plates payment information. You just enter all the particulars about your car as well as the plate number that's attached to the car and it just spits out what you owe for that year. It's so cool. So if there were fines that were not being disclosed to you or things like that from the seller, this is the website for you to check all that good stuff and then you know exactly what you're going to owe when you buy this car and pay for the plates for that year. Now on the other hand, there's kind of a little bonus. If you happen to be buying the car partway through the year, let's say June or July of that year, chances are that that current owner, if he was driving the car in January, he's probably paid the plates for that year in January, February. And then lucky you, you're paid up for that entire calendar year because it goes from the 1st of January to the 31st of December. When we communicated with the professional car helper guy that I mentioned a little earlier in this video, he was very helpful for us and allowed me to send him a few photos of paperwork for different cars that we were considering and guided me for free. Thank you. As to whether the papers were in order for this car or not in order for that car. And we walked away from two of them and then went with the third one when he said the papers were all in order. It just gave us big peace of mind. He does charge and he charges quite a bit for his services. But if you're someone who needs more guidance than even we looked for, then we would really recommend you get in touch. 
So then, once we got a sort of a green light that that particular car was okay to proceed with, well, that's the time to let the seller know you're interested and go and make arrangements to buy the car. And this is where you want to work out an arrangement that works for both parties. Now, you're probably speaking in Spanish and possibly a foreign language. And so the two of you have to just take the time together. And if it's meant to be, it will be. Your communication will go smooth. They will be patient with you. You hopefully will be patient with them. And you work out a win-win deal that works for both parties. For us, being foreigners, we're Canadian. Withdrawing a whole bunch of money from the bank was probably going to be part of the process, but a little tedious. So we did hit the bank machines and we tried to find one that gave us the most bang for our buck. The withdrawal location that we used was an HSBC ATM because it allowed us to withdraw 15,000 pesos in one fell swoop. Yes, the fee was a little bit higher at this bank machine at 82 pesos per withdrawal, but it was well worth it because we had to make less withdrawals. We had to withdraw a couple of times to get enough to pay for about half the car. Then the other half was paid through bank transfers. And I talk about all this in just a bit. Our seller was pretty savvy and suggested using the app called Wise. I was pumped to hear that because I use Wise for lots of things to pay rents in many different countries around the world. So that was cool. I already had it, the apps on my phone and laptop. And so I was pumped up. And so anyways, our seller was willing to take about half of the total purchase cost through WISE. WISE works better for us many times. It's more cost efficient than almost any transferring we've ever done before, and it's much lower cost. WISE doesn't pay us to say that, but they do give us an invite code. If you're interested to check it out, we'll leave the link for you in the description. We do highly recommend you check it out. It's made paying rents and purchasing cars and things like that awesome in Indonesia, Mexico, anywhere you go. You can certainly work it out with your seller any way that's comfortable for both you and them, but I'll share with you exactly what we did in case it might give you some ideas as to how to complete your purchase. What worked for us is our seller was willing to meet with us on one day and we made some bank transfers. We happened to make three bank transfers to him because Mexican citizens have to report deposits of more than a certain amount of money in their bank accounts. So he gave us three separate bank accounts and we transferred 15,000 pesos to each of those bank accounts. We sat together at the table. We waited until he checked his bank and confirmed that the funds were there. It was a very easy, uh, friendly transaction actually. Wise made it fast and easy. We completed the bill of sale together and both signed it. And when all that was done, the seller, in exchange for our deposit, gave us the car and one key, but no paperwork, which we would absolutely need to be legal to drive the car on the road. So this was a win-win. So you see, we could kind of take the car to like a block or two from our house and feel safe, but we couldn't go on the highways or anything. If we ever got pulled over with no papers, bad news, right? So we had the car, we could get to the grocery store, but within two, three days, we were expected to get together with the seller to meet him a second time to exchange the rest of the purchase price in exchange for all the paperwork we would need to get the car legal and on the road. Okay, well now the car is paid in full and it's officially yours. You've got all the paperwork you need. The next thing to do is to make sure you pay that plate. So go to the website that I told you about before. In our description box, I'll put a handy link there. Check out, again, how much is owing on the plate. Get a screenshot of that online and save it on your phone or your laptop. You take it to a print shop in Mexico, they call it papeleria, and then print it out in color if you want. For me, I just found it looked a little more official. Then you need to pay it. So you take this printout and read it. On the form, it lists several ways to pay. It lists several different grocery stores, banks, etc. What we did is we just thought, well, one of the grocery stores listed was Shadrawi. It was just a few blocks from our rented condo, so that made sense. I just went there first. I went to the Shedrawi and for some weird reason, the big long number that I needed to enter into the system was not working in their system. Dang. The cashier and I tried so many times and the lineup was backing up behind me. Anyway, she finally just told me, I'm sorry, it's not working. So that was it. Out of luck there. She recommended that really, you know, a bank is a better place to pay it. So on my list, there was a Santander listed and that was the next closest thing to me. So perfect. Off I went to Santander. When I entered Sa the Santander ATM area, there was a lovely lady standing at the front of the ATMs who was assisting customers. Yahoo! Just my luck. So she asked me what I needed and I told her she basically took me by the hand and did everything. She walked me right up to the ATM. She pushed all the buttons for me. All I had to do was put in my cash to pay. It was so slick, you guys. To pay, you need cash bills, no coins at all. So you just feed your bills into the machine and it spit out my change. We put the thousand pesos uh -huh. here yeah. and now... Confirmar. Si, por favor. Uh -huh. 
It sounds good. <laughs> Hablas en inglés? Poquito. Poquito. Muy, muy poquito. Yo también en español. <laughs> Coins come out here. Uh -huh. Cash will come here. Uh -huh. That's the change. So we're finished. The bank machine at the Santander printed out my change, printed out my receipt, and now I am to keep this receipt and this placas paper. It was awesome. My plates were paid for the whole year. So make sure to keep and take good care of this ATM slip. It's not like super crucial, but for me, I just like my paperwork in order. And especially when I'm thinking ahead to my future buyer, if I can staple the ATM slip with my plates registration paper thingy and show that everything's paid that's just an added benefit for my next buyer right it's a selling feature big time so basically what i'm saying at the end of all this paying for your plate section is just go to a bank it made life so much simpler even if there was no one there to assist me at the atms i watched what she pushed it was like three buttons or so and it was done it was very very simple so we have probably the most important and final thing to talk to you about for getting your car roadworthy and legal on the road, insurance. But first remember, these procedures sound easy when I'm talking about them, but when you go through them, they can take hours and days of research and trying to get your ducks in a row. And it can be a little bit tedious at times, but with a little bit of work and perseverance brings you to the other side with a car that you can drive and your freedom in Mexico. And it is so worth it. There's so much to see in Mexico. So if this info is helping you at all, please consider supporting our channel. Buy us a coffee. There's a link down in the description below. But minimally and for free, you can click the like button or leave us a comment. It really helps a lot. Okay, insurance. Not exactly a fun topic. But you want to start looking online. Uh, that's what we did from home. You can start looking online or asking friends in various Facebook groups or people you just meet about their recommended insurance companies. There are going to be several ways you can start your research. For me, I started with just a simple Google search for companies, and I found companies like Qualitas, ANA, HDI, Seguros. There are many, many more, but I basically just sent out emails to every company that had some kind of contact page and inquired about what their costs would be to insure A, and then you give them your vehicle particulars. In the end, I ended up getting four quotes, and I chose the best quote for us, and I juggled between price, policy coverage, ease of communicating with that broker, and possibly the ease of refunds at the end of our stay in Mexico for when I sold the car. Because I, I would be buying a year or a six month policy and I would only be using about three months of it. So before I even purchased my policy, I asked about what is their refund policy? Do they refund at all for portions unused? For us, we plan to be in Mexico only now and then, and we balance it between time in Canada and other countries around the world. That's what our whole channel is about, plan free. So for us, there was a good company called HDI Seguros. It's a Mexican company. For our needs, for the short time, it was perfect. They offered a six month policy for a really great price. It was under $360 Canadian for six months. So that was the one for us, and we hoped we wouldn't have to use it. When we sold our car in Mexico three months later, we emailed the insurance broker. After jumping through several hoops that HDI made him send to us to jump through, we got a refund for three of the six months of our policy. Yahoo! There are three important things to note about your insurance in Mexico. The first one is you might be watching this from several different states in Mexico. They are all a little different. Welcome to Mexico. So for today's video, we'll just explain our experience living in Nayarit and Jalisco. We live very near the border, so we often went back and forth between the two states. But you can look into it further for your area. We were told that 50% of the time, Jalisco would be cheaper for insurance. Oh, for sure, go with Jalisco. And then we were told 50% of the time, Nayarit's going to be cheaper for car insurance in Mexico. For sure, go with Nayarit. It wasn't very helpful. But after all is said and done, I just got those four quotes I talked about and picked the best one. And it kind of depends on what state you're in, what state you're going to be in for most of your time in Mexico, and what state you're going to sell your car in in Mexico. Give that some thought and choose the state to insure your car in, as well as register your plates in, based on those three things. If you're close to a state line like we were, you can get quotes from both and make the best choice. We just decided that since the plates on our car were from Jalisco, we would just obtain insurance in Jalisco. Keep it simple. The insurance company asked for a copy, copy of a utility bill for an address in Jalisco, so we just had our landlord send us a picture of her water bill. 
easy peasy and that's almost all the insurance company required from us other than personal info and a credit card. The second most important thing to keep in mind about all this paperwork is that you do not want to keep these papers in your car. You want to keep them out of your car, in your home, somewhere safe, away from the car. The reason is if someone was to ever break into your car and steal those papers, you're going to have so much trouble down the road getting them back and reselling your car in the future. The only item to keep in the glove compartment or visor of your car is the circulation card. It's about the size of a credit card or driver's license and it's plastic. What happens in the event of getting pulled over is you hand the officer that circulation card and your driver's license and usually that's it. No bribes, right? And just a mini side note, most people, if you're going to keep your car longer term in Mexico, you would change the plates into your name and get that all, all the registration in your name. We didn't do that only because we were buying a car for a very short time. We knew three months later we'd be selling it. And it doesn't have to be in your name to match the bill of sale like it does in Canada or the USA. So if you're buying a car for shorter term, you can consider leaving the plates in that other guy's name and just driving it. Because how it works in Mexico is it's legal for anyone to drive your car as long as they have that circulation card in the glove compartment. Okay, the third important point about paperwork and insurance is if you are ever to get into an accident and you have to use your insurance, do not move your car. You have to wait till the authorities and the insurance agent visit the scene of the accident immediately right then and there. Otherwise, your insurance will be void. Some things to keep in mind when you buy a used vehicle in Mexico, maybe depending on price point, but you may have to repair a few small things. In our case, that included getting an extra chip key cut so that we could have a second key. Having one key is not great. What if you lost it? We changed a couple light bulbs. We fixed the horn that didn't work. And oh man, you need that in Mexico. We fixed the emergency brake that was a little bit wiggly between our two chairs. And we fixed the windshield washer pump that wasn't spraying water onto the windshield. The good news is these things are so relatively inexpensive compared to the foreign country that you're probably from. And it's part of the process. So we were happy to pay a thousand or two thousand pesos to have all that kind of stuff fixed. It was very inexpensive. Well, now, if you need help or information about how to obtain your temporary residency in Mexico in order to buy a car and get your freedom in Mexico, you'll want to watch this video next.